Hello and welcome to episode eight of the Just Talking About Films podcast. I'm Ian Sargentson. And I'm Luke Taylor, and it is great to be with you today. And uh, just to talk about films, that's that's all we're here to do. Talk about films that have shaped our lives, films we've seen recently, and uh, just have a conversation as people who all have something in common. We love films. And we've got another guest with us this week. I'd like to introduce you to John. Hello, John. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Very good, thanks. And we met on Twitter, um, where you have a, a very different name so i was referring to you as carl for the first however long but it's great for you um to be with us so i'm delighted that we finally got you on to just talk about films with us i'm delighted to be here thank you so much for inviting me well actually i invited myself and you said yes so. <laughs> which is well, which is want. more than fine in fact if you <laughs> want to invite yourself we're fine with that just and get in touch with us and we'd love to invite you on yeah absolutely so um where are you based john uh, I'm in Bristol. Um, I think Emma was on last week yeah. and uh, she mentioned, uh, I think you sort of didn't quite understand that she, we actually do see each other. It was like, oh yeah, I saw yourself on Twitter. But yeah, she was actually sat in my seat last week at the cinema, one of the uh, showings that we went to. Uh, I had my ticket printed out and she was already sat there. So, she was yeah, eight, oh, that's, that's oh, not Oh, no, no, she yeah. didn't. So then I, it was one of those, you know, the snowball effects. So I then sat somewhere else and then the people who were supposed to be sat in that seat came along and said, don't worry, we'll go and sit somewhere else. So, I mean, the cinema wasn't anywhere near packed, so there was loads of rooms, but it's just like, you know, I, I, Emma always sits down the very, very front. I think there were, again, people were sat in her seat, so I like to sit right in the very middle of the middle row, but then I walked yeah. up and thought, someone's in my seat, and it's like, oh, okay, I'll let you off. <laughs> so, uh, two weeks in a row, I've had someone from Bristol, so if you're listening or watching from Bristol and you want to come on, let us know, or anywhere, really, we don't mind. Yeah, and just a message to the people of Bristol: um, take the seat you're assigned, otherwise you cause a snowball effect like that, and uh, John doesn't get to sit in the seat he wants. <laughs> in the middle of the middle row, which is what I like as well. Oh dear, I like that. With, with the Cine World ones, there's some bits where there's a bar, like across where just before the the, the, the where it goes to the front. As long as I can put my feet up and at the side, so people aren't walking in front of you the whole time, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So there we go. What's your favourite cinema scene? Let us know. <laughs> okay, so let's get on with um, what have we been watching this week? So, Luke, you kick us off. Oh, right. Oh, I'll go first. Right. Hold on one second. Let me bring up my list. I've got a list. Hold on one second. Where's my list? Um, okay, right. So this week I have been watching. Uh, I started off the week with Dan in Real Life, um, which is, uh, it's all right. It's, it's a nice, gentle Steve Carell comedy you know it was and then because it was the 40th anniversary this week i did raiders of the lost ark um which will definitely come up when we're talking about iconic scenes because uh, there's so many iconic scenes in that but I, I before we even get to i've got to say is raiders of the lost ark the greatest opening sequence in any film ever because <laughs> i can't think of anything that can top it that's a, good know, that's, just, that's a big question to just spring on. <laughs> it is. Have a think about kind of that when we get to out. iconic scenes. So for this, I think it's the best character introduction you will ever see. For this moment, I will say yes until I have a chance to think about it. And then I might <laughs> come back and say no. Or I might go, yeah, it is very good. It is a very good opening sequence. It's wonderful. Anyway, so thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hadn't seen it in a few years. Um, and uh, I just blown away by it. it's got the best opening sequence i've ever seen best closing shot which is behind me uh it's got um one of the greatest exposition dump sequences i've ever seen it's just a wonderful wonderful film well i don't know that'd be a good conversation for another time um because i've got something in one of my iconic scenes to talk about later that i would possibly raise you if we were playing opening scenes poker um, <laughs> <laughs> but but we'll see. But yeah, Dan in real life, I've watched that before. I can't remember much about it. I think I was whelmed. I wasn't overwhelmed. I wasn't underwhelmed. I think I just thought it was all right. Yeah, um, Dan, it, it, it's, it's, it was pleasant enough. To, yeah, good distraction film. Have you seen um, that, John? Never even heard of it. Let Lindsay see it. I'm afraid. Don't know that all one. I remember is something to do with pancakes. Yes. <laughs> does, the poster's got him with his head on a bunch of pancakes. Well, that um, be what I remember. I it, it was, you know, it's okay. It's light. It's fun. It's uh, It's got a good cast, really good cast. Um, and then I followed up Raiders with uh, The Temple of Doom. 
Of course. Uh, which, uh, looking back, I, it was always the one that freaked me out the most, and I can see why. But it is not a patch on the first film at all. I didn't like that one at all. No, it's... Uh, and when you look at it now through sort of more, more modern eyes, boy, it's kind of... It's really racist <laughs> in a whole <laughs> host of ways. <laughs> Um, but still enjoyed it. And then I rewatched the film nobody else ever watches. Uh, I rewatched Death to Smoochie this week. And uh, that's a film. Have you ever seen that, John? Not seen that one either, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's one you of those films. I've never heard of it. Some films well, you look at and you go, it before. Yeah, you, 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 you'll think this would never get made today. But you watch this and you go, I don't even know how this got made then. <laughs> 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 it is it is bonkers uh, we re-watched The Quiet Place 2 went back to the cinema to watch that um, again it bears a second watch it was it was uh, except you know you can't ever watch maybe that's a, I, I, there's got somebody's got to invent a way where you can forget a film <laughs> so you can watch it again for the first time because um, it's always it's good a second time but it's not the same experience and uh, I wish I could have seen it for the second time again uh, and then just two more films that I did this week. Um, I watched Primal Fear, a film that I've never come across before, but I heard Ed, it was the one that broke Edward Norton, apparently a great performance by Edward Norton in it. Um, I got to the end thinking, apart from Edward Norton's performance, there's nothing going for it. <laughs> it's got a great cast, but uh, and I don't understand why it's called Primal Fear. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the, nobody's experienced Richard Gere in as well. Sorry? Is that Richard yes. Gere in that one as well? Yeah, yeah I Richard know Gere. the film, but I think, again, I might have watched it a long, long time ago. Can't can't remember it. It's all. pretty forgettable. It was it was good to see Edward Norton arriving, as it were, but uh, beyond that, it didn't really have much going for it. And then last night, we uh, rewatched Sing Street. Yeah, good um, film. I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed things. It's just a nice film to watch. Just gets it puts me in a good mood every time. Although I'm, pre- have you seen it, John? <laughs> Sorry, I've not seen any of these ones. It's it's <laughs> probably not a spoiler to say, but um, I'm pretty convinced <laughs> the two main characters die five minutes after the film ends. Quite possibly. <laughs> it's a happy ending, but the, 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 you know it's a big positive happy ending. But um, they're in a very dangerous situation. I'm pretty sure they end up dead. <laughs> Well, it's a good film. I, I enjoyed it. It was one of them ones that I was surprised by and was like, yeah. I've never heard of it and just saw it on Netflix or whatever it was on, watched it and was like, oh, what a great film. I've not heard of this. It's it's uh, John Carney. And he, I've, I've only ever seen two of his films, um, which was that one and what was it called? Begin Again. And both films are just about how the joy of music and yeah. the joy music can bring somebody's life and and specifically writing music and that, and it's it's the process of creating music and it's it's really enjoyable to watch. Very so, good. Uh, yeah, that's been my week. It's been a busy week. Very good. Uh, what about you, John? What have you been watching? Well, um, longer story is that um, when the Cine World opened recently, I binged everything. Uh, so I watched everything that I wanted to watch in five days. So um, I've not been to the cinema for about 10 days now because obviously there's nothing really new on. So when a friend of mine on Sunday said, are you going to the cinema tonight? I went on to the Liz and said, seen it, seen it, seen it. So all I've been doing this week is watching stuff um, on the TV and on the streaming services. So I started off, I must have, I had to break it down over a couple of days due to things, but I watched the, the, the first Hobbit. I eventually got around to watching the first Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. Never seen it before. I'm not even quite sure why because I've watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy mm-hmm multiple times from literally beginning to end but i think it's almost like like i'm a bit with like music sometimes in that when something new comes out and something else has been so good i don't want the new thing to taint my memory of the old thing if that makes any sense at all yeah i get that yeah. i was concerned that the hobbit wasn't going to be anywhere near as good as lord of the rings so i just never got around to watching it and i think i was flicking around as you do and um it said you know it's only available for sort of six more days I thought, right, well, I better catch it now then. So, so I watched that and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. you know, the usual three hours long uh, movie uh, by Peter Jackson. But um, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm going to move on to the, to the next two, if they're still there, um, and, and get on to that. So, yeah, caught up with that. Then I watched uh, St. Maud. Again, it's a horror film that I've sort of heard about in the background. People saying it's quite good. Um, it was. It's, I, I don't 
I don't normally like things that are completely open to interpretation. I am a bit of a, you know, beginning, middle, end mm. type of guy. But um, I really enjoyed that film. It's not really horror as such. It's more, um, well, again, you're questioning you know, how much of it did actually happen, how much is in the, uh, you know, the person's head. Um, and then the ending is, is, is quite a shock, although you can sort of see it coming. So um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, then uh, a couple of days ago, because of the other questions that I'm going to be asked, I decided to try and watch um, the Martin McDonough films. So I tried to find The Guard and In Bruges. Mm. Uh, I watched three billboards a couple of times, but none of them are available. They're available to rent. Mm. So I thought, right, I need to find something else by Brendan Gleeson because he's such an amazing actor. I'll, wa I'll watch another one of those. So I rewatched uh, The General. I don't know if you've seen that one. It's the, the black and... Well, it's not actually black and white. It's a very strange film in that it's almost like in a sepia colour all the way through. There's odd flashes of colour. Uh, but I watched that, the biography of the Martin Cahill in Ireland. Uh, so I said I knew what was happening. And I, again, it's a question like, you know, I'll rewatch it after all this time to see if it was as good as I remember. Um, it was. It's um, again. There are bits of it that, that, that the soundtrack is is jarring. I mean, there are things going on in the film, um, a bit like the other the other thing we'll be discussing later. And um, but the music just doesn't fit. It's mm -hmm. all this happy go lucky, you know, music, and he's off robbing people's houses at gunpoint and stuff like this. And this this not right. So I watched that, and then last night again, a friend of mine recommended I watch Crash. Now, I thought she meant the David Cronenberg one, but she didn't. She meant the Oscar-nominated one or Oscar-winning one in 2004 with the, the great ensemble cast about mm. a sort of a period, of, a short period of time in L.A. I don't know if you have you seen the film rather than me describe it. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Um, Is that the, the, the one about racism? Yes. I mean, yeah. basically, if you, you get a big hammer with racism written on it and it sort of punches you in the face uh, repeatedly. So, I mean, yeah. after she said it was one of her, her favourite films ever, um, I thought it was all right. I mean, it, it was quite interesting because I don't really like to watch, review, oh, sorry, read reviews on IMDb often before I see a film. Um, I'll read them after to see if what I've thought is, is mm -hmm. what other people think. And, um, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I don't really know why it, was, it won the Oscar as such. I mean, the overwhelming feeling that I got after watching was, well, I'm glad I don't live there because everybody's <laughs> horrible. They're absolutely awful to everybody. And it's just like, it's, you know, it, it doesn't paint LA in a, in a very nice picture, but I don't, you know, I don't suppose it's supposed to. I mean, you know, mm. but, um, uh, uh, you know, one comment on IMDb did actually make me think of it. It's like um, race, racism as such isn't normally as in your face as this. It's almost, you know, they don't tell you things to your face. Like, I mean, there's literally people mocking other people's accents to their face when something happens. Uh, and, and the comments said they wouldn't do that. What they do is they'd go home and mock that person's accent to their friends and family. Yeah. And I thought, actually, that, that would make more sense. It wouldn't make much of a film. But um, so, yeah, I watched it. I thought it was OK. Um, I can't say I'd be rushing to watch it again. So that was the four films I've done this week. Very good. Yeah. I know what you mean about The Hobbit. I was the same because I, I enjoyed the Lord of the Rings films as films, never really read them as a kid. But I, when The Hobbit came out and all th three of them, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't that interested because and it wasn't because I thought they would ruin them. I just thought, well, I kind of got the backstory. So, but it is, it's just an extension really, isn't it? It's just a similar <laughs> kind of film with people going on an adventure to do something, but, so and I enjoyed it as well, but it's one of them ones where it's like, I want to watch the second one, but when have I got three hours free? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, I think that's definitely one of the reasons I put it off, because then you're thinking, I'm going to have to commit nearly 10 hours of my life to watch yeah. this series, and do I want to do that again? So uh, the answer was no, but then I thought, come on, let's you know, pull your pull your socks up and get on with it. I, uh, so, I did The Hobbit at the cinema um, when they were doing it in the 60 frames a second, you know, the, um, and I just came out thinking... There's something about I, I don't like the 60 frames a second thing because it, it felt like it felt like watching a TV program. It didn't feel like a film. The, everything just looked fake. The effects mm. looked fake. Uh, and I came out and I was more put off by the um, by the experience of the 60 frames a second than engaged with the film. So I actually didn't see the other two afterwards. Mm. <laughs> right, okay. um, so because I, I just didn't want to go back to the cinema and watch another film like that. And then you kind of just you don't catch up after a while, do you? 
Mm. So we've all seen the first one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I enjoyed it, but a bit a bit like John. So it was one of the ones that I don't want to commit 10 hours. So I do it in chunks. So the, the, the first one I did maybe two months ago. So I keep thinking I need to get to that second one, especially as you say, they are time limited on Prime, is it? Yeah, so, this one was so it's like I want to get them watched because if, again, everything I, I enjoyed about Lord of the Rings was, was in them. Um, I keep seeing that Saint Maud thing on is it Netflix or one of the streaming things that I see it on. So um, yeah, I haven't got to that yet. But Crash, I remember watching when it came out, and maybe two thousand and four. So yeah, I think I probably just wasn't as socially or politically or anything aware then. So I probably just thought, I don't know what it's on about. It's a bit boring. Do you know what I mean? Because I was talking the other week about back then, I, I wanted to watch films that, with explosions and people were walking away from explosions. And <laughs> it was all about entertainment. I didn't really care about the story. It, it, was, it had to be simple. It was like stories by numbers, what I used to watch films. It was like, I want something to happen in a good revenge film. And then, you know, Rambo, not the first blood because that was actually very good. Same as most of the Sylvester Stallone films start off really well. And then <laughs> the story matters less and less as they go on. But, you know, when you get to Rambo three, <laughs> Rambo, it's just like, that's the kind of level I wanted to watch films at. What have you watched this week, Ian? This week, I've not watched that many this week. I've actually had work to do this week. So um, <laughs> well, I've worked to every week, but I've actually, physically been required to be a different place so i've watched i went old school really um so i watched dirty harry because oh, right. i remember watching it when i was younger my dad recommended told me it was a great film but again it just looked dated when i was a kid you know like i didn't care for anything my dad recommended music anything <laughs> but now everything my dad recommended i was like that was the greatest the music he was right about it and films i love the way it looks um have you seen dirty harry luke no, no, I've never seen it. Again, probably for very similar reasons. And have you seen it, John? I certainly have, many times. In fact, yeah. I, I rewatched Sudden Impact about a month ago because I, I thought I've watched Dirty Harry so many times. Let's, let's watch one of the other one in the series. But um, yeah, I'm not sure it holds up very well over time. But um, yeah, I do enjoy Dirty Harry, absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, I enjoyed it. I say, um, thought it was good. I liked the way it looks. I like the cinematography. He's particularly capturing, you know, big scenes of San Francisco because a lot of it's, not a lot of it, a large portion of it's set on rooftops. Um, I think Clint Eastwood done really well, but he's playing effectively the same character for his whole career. <laughs> Miserable, grumpy, hard man. Um, so so he, he does it well. Um, the story is really good, you know, about a, a serial killer effectively is trying to just um, negotiate with the police department, um, but of a sociopath. The only thing I found that I didn't really like, and it wasn't the acting, but it was the character of the, the killer. It was just a bit too quirky for me. It was more comedic than it was sinister. Right. Um, so um, not overly, but I just kept wanting to giggle when he'd say something or do something <laughs> rather than, you know, sensing any threat. Um, which was obviously there was a lot of threat. Um, so I watched that, and then I, I think maybe I'm just watching films that you recommend Luke, week on week. But <laughs> I watched Rear Window by Hitchcock. Oh, it's it's good, isn't it? Yeah, because and I watched it because I remember really, really enjoying Disturbia a few years ago, and there was a lot of controversy about that. It just basically ripped off Rear Window. But again, it was one of these old films that so old and a classic, <laughs> and oh. <laughs> How good it but I loved it, absolutely loved it. It was beautifully shot, really well done, particularly when it's all based in one one place, effectively, from one perspective. Um, great acting, keeps you guessing right throughout. So I, I did really enjoy that. And in fact, most of it as well, it's it's so relaxed as a film. You're a little bit suspicious, but there's no threat until somebody finally goes over there. And so most of the yeah. film, you're just enjoying watching other people with somebody yeah. else. Well, he taps into the to everybody the whole fascination we have with watching other people, really. Yeah. Um, that we all enjoy doing it, but it's kind of taboo, isn't it? Voyeurism or whatever, but it's like we, we all enjoy people watching. But one thing, again, as we talked about the other week with Jaws, one of the things that I think Spielberg does well is he incorporates sounds and sights that place you in that place so you can almost 
feel the heat and almost smell the sun cream and jaws. And it was the same with this because it was all set in a hot, hot time. It kept showing you the thermostat um, that I could, I was feeling warm. <laughs> no, but you know, I could feel how warm it was because it was showing it so well. And that's just a sign of great filmmaking when you can almost tangibly feel how heated it is because of the suggestion of the heat. You're probably getting a bit of that 4DX experience with the heat we're having at the moment as well. <laughs> well, possibly, yeah, because it has been quite warm. Um, but so, yeah, so those two films. And then I all, all, also rewatched uh, There Will Be Blood, right. which is superb film. I mean, it's it's again another long one, but I really enjoyed it. Particularly the first sixteen minutes, nobody speaks. It's just Daniel Day Lewis on his own, falling down things, blowing stuff up, you know, trying to find gold, and there's just no words. There's a few groans and that, but it's just gripping. I really, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Again, it's one of those films that I didn't appreciate when I watched it um, initially. I went on release. Because it it just was boring because I I watched films in a different way back then. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Enough. What about so you, John? What... Have you seen any any of those? Well, it's a coincidence actually because um, again, what I've done over time, I like to go into like these cheap DVD shops and pick up. Uh, you know, I'll come out with a sort of stack this high that I pay the tenner for because they're yeah. fifty p. Uh, and one of them is uh, There Will Be Blood, which I've never watched. So I thought, right, actually, that'll be a good bit of homework for for this. I'll watch that. But um, my, my evenings were going on, and it was, I was only ever free about sort of half past nine, ten o'clock. Mm. And I looked at the back, and I thought, I'm not starting that this time. Right? <laughs> so, um, no, I still, I've, I've got it. I've literally pulled it out of my pile of DVDs to watch, but I've not actually got around to watching it yet because it was a bit too long for the time I had. So um, I don't know what to do. Will I, will I enjoy it then, Ian, or, or not? Will it be boring, or will it be um, in, you know, exciting? No, I think <laughs> it's, it's really good. Daniel Day-Lewis is phenomenal. Um yeah, I think it's really good. Ask it's one of the ones that now I watch films for the story and um, things that I like to make films to make me feel. It's one of the ones that asks questions of you, and it's not just or oh, this person's good, this person's bad. There's a lot of grey areas, and who do you side with? And it plays on your ethical and moral compass a bit. Um, so, so yeah, I like it. Have you seen it, Luke? No, I haven't. No, it's. Okay. I, th- I think. <sighs> This is, it's the wrong way to watch it. So I think I started watching it on an aeroplane once and thought, no, this isn't the right way to watch this. No. I think I did the same with No Country for Old Men as well, which I have seen since. But it was like, no, this isn't the right way to see this. So I stopped and then actually just never got back to it. Good um, stuff. But it's one I, sh- I, sh- I should see. Um, I, it's, it's been one of those sort of back burner ones, but you, know, you kind of forget it exists. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it, yeah, really good film. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, good. On the Hitchcock vibe, obviously I noticed that you two have been chatting about catching up on a, a couple of Hitchcocks. Uh, I, I sort of, again, took that up. So I watched uh, Vertigo. I rewatched that. I, again, yeah. it's one of these, I can't remember if I've watched it or not, but certainly I can't remember it. But I watched that. And um, again, I, I don't know whether it's, you know, almost like, you know, obviously Hitch- Hitchcock is revered as a director. But I watched it and I thought, is that it? Is that what everybody is, you know, literally, you know, <laughs> said it's one of the best films ever made? And I'm sat there thinking, well, it's all right, but you know. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the Hitchcock I rewatched again about about a month or so ago. But um, I haven't watched Rear Window, so perhaps I should watch a couple more. Yeah. I mean, they definitely feel the age. They definitely feel like old films. But when you think about the limits of the technology he was working with at the time, yeah. and what he was able to achieve with that, and um, even the like the the you know where he's getting that dream sequence in in, in Vertigo, at the time that must have been outstanding. It's kind of yes. silly now, <laughs> but but it's uh, a strange end to that film. It just goes, and it's over. <laughs> it's just like, I, was, I don't know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting it to end like that. <laughs> no, as I say, that's when it finishes, like, okay, what's on next? So, <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of films of that time, though, it was like the transition from the stage to the screen. So I recently watched 12 Angry Men again, and that was the same. It was made for theatre, but I think it transitioned really well. And the same with Rear Window. It's mm. almost like a theatrical set, do you know what I mean, mm. like on stage, because it is limited. Um, it could be done as a stage show, effectively. But, uh, yeah, but I liked it. Um, and some of the things when we've talked about recently, and I still maintain it, sometimes it's about your expectations. 
Yeah. So I my expectations weren't particularly high, so I was pleasantly surprised um, by it. But as we talked about the other week, when with stuff with Parasite or other films where it's built up that much before you watch it, then sometimes I think they can suffer because of that. So Rear Window, I had no huge expectations, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Well, let's move on to films of your life, John. We're going to um, talk about um, films that have, have meant a lot to you over your life. And uh, first one is always the hard one. And we'll, we'll you know, what is one of your favourite films? Because I know it's too hard <laughs> to pin it down to just one. Uh, yeah. So again, I say I did sort of invite myself onto this uh, podcast a few weeks ago. So I've changed multiple times. So I've gone over the answers in my head a few times. So, I mean, my honest answer would still be Jaws, although I think it's probably boring that a lot of people say Jaws. So then um, on your, your Twitter feed, you asked for a film that you really liked from before you were born. So I put the good and the bad, and the ugly on, mm -hmm. because again, that's just, you know, a classic film that I've watched, even though that's over three hours long. I've watched that multiple times and I could probably just put it on again uh, this afternoon and, and rewatch that. It's just, you know, it is Clint being Clint, but Clint does Clint really well. So, yeah, yeah. You know. Can I ask you a question on that? How does it compare yeah. to Once Upon a Time in the West? Because that's the... Yeah, because you mentioned that last week, didn't yeah. you? And um, I'm not sure. Again, because I've watched so many films, I'm a bit like Emma. My brain doesn't, you know, literally remember everything. I'm not sure that I've watched it. So I, right. I honestly can't compare, I'm afraid. But um, Because uh, I really yeah. enjoyed that. And I thought, because it's a genre I've not really gone down. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, Good, Bad and Ugly might be the next one on my list. Yeah, because obviously there's the, you know, there's the few, isn't there? Like the uh, a fistful of dollars and a few, for a few dollars more, and uh, the the sort of the spaghetti western genre. But that one is is still um, you know head and shoulders above the rest for me. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to put that one on my list. Yeah, yeah. But set some time aside, as I said, because it's quite long. Um, <laughs> but um, in the end, I thought I'm going to go for something that probably um, not a lot of people would say uh which is um my my uh screensaver or my, my background here which is um Paul urban um has dread um because whilst you know the, the question about what is your favorite film or what's the first thing you see is a bit blurry um when the question is asked what film didn't you see in the cinema that you would love to see now that that's my instant answer i don't even have to think twice about it because, um, oh, sorry, have you, have you seen it, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah, I just check? It's not the Sylvester Stallone one. No, it's not. It's definitely not. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful film. I mean, the colours, uh, regardless of the story, are, are just amazing. I mean, I think they did the, the 3D version, which, again, I didn't see. I mean, I, I don't quite know how I missed it in the cinema at all, because, you know, I've loved comics. I mean, you know, the topics that we were discussing, you know, if you just talk about Marvel films, I, I, you know, we, we could talk for hours about those because I love those types of things. But for some reason, this one just passed me by until I watched it probably on, on TV or one of the streaming services. And I just fell in love with it. I mean, Carl Urban is, he, he, he's absolutely Judge Dredd. It's, it's, you know, again, it's, it's a shame that there doesn't look like there's going to be a sequel because obviously being a comic book franchise, there are hundreds of stories they could do <laughs> Uh, and it, it's, it's bordering on the film, you know, the films you love but don't get enough appreciation. This, I'll probably be repeating myself and, and saying this one, although I have chosen another one. Um, because it's one of these things that when people do watch it, they, most of the time, the, the, the feedback is, wow, that was amazing. And it's a shame that it didn't get pushed by the studios to, to the level I think it deserves because, I say so. So that would be the, 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 my favorite film at the moment. Say, so ask me tomorrow. I might give you a completely different answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. Brilliant. Yeah, I've got it here. Um, it's on my shelf. I haven't watched it recently. I remember, and I guess this this probably polarises or shows, you know, in one sentence how my film views have changed over the years. But when I watched the Sylvester Stallone, Judge Dredd, when that came out, I loved it. I watched it recently and it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. I was offended by how bad <laughs> it was. <laughs> but when I watched it, I, I was like, I'm the law. I was like, loving it. This is great. But watching it recently, I was like, that is awful. Um, so, yeah, I'll get back um, and watch this one again. Well, he commits um, a sacrilege of taking his helmet off. 
you know, Judge Dredd never takes his helmet off. I mean, as soon as you do that, you've lost me. You know, it's just like, mm. no, that's just not paying any respect to the source material at all there. Very good. And just going, moving back, so can you remember a film that you watched that made you think, oh, you, I don't know, that helped, made you fall in love with films that you thought had such an impact on you that you thought, I just love this. It was really good. Well, again, it's... Um... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting on a bit now. So my memory of, of times gone by is a bit blurry. So I'll sort of give you a, a little montage of, of where I was. I mean, the first thing that I can remember, the first time I can remember going to the cinema was when I was about 10, I think. And I went with a couple of mates um, because down the road from my house, there was a cinema just in one of the high streets. It's long been demolished or turned into houses or pubs now. But we went on Saturday morning to watch the Saturday morning kids program uh, and it was back in the day again it's one of these things where i'm not sure if my memory is is correct or if i'm drawing on like images of, uh, of cliches of the time like you know was there a piano player down the front <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so i think that was long gone before i got there but well, I, I remember that like, there was people walking around with the trays of you know ice creams and, and drinks before the films wandering up and down the aisles of people want to do that um and um so I remember, I say, just the building and being allowed in there without my parents, just going with the friends. I mean, it was carnage. I mean, I, again, the one thing I can remember about that is all the kids just crawling around on the floor, not interested in the film, and throwing popcorn at each other. So that's uh, sort of my very, very earliest memory of, of the cinema. But then, um, then moving on to my actual love of films itself, I think a couple of things happened. One was uh, before the days of uh, video recorders. My dad bought a projector and um, we had a spool spool projector and, and the big screen in the living room. Wow. So we would go to the video <laughs> shop back in those days and buy you know, and rent these things and actually get them on the spool. So, you know, again, watching these films on a, on a big screen in the house. I mean, it's, it's the virtual cinema experience back yeah. in, you know, let's say talking 30, 40, 35 years ago. So uh, yeah, he was a bit ahead of my time, a bit ahead of his time, my dad. And um, but there are two films that I remember there, and I probably watched them far too young. Uh, what the first one was Alien, um, which back in the days they say is is odd. You, know, you sort of question you like, did that happen? But the way they did it back in those days, you didn't even have to hire the whole film. They did like um, a truncated version onto one spool that lasted about thirty five minutes. So, wow. yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm absolutely positive because we watched the film uh, and it ends with um, Ripley flying off uh, into, into safety. And I distinctly remember thinking, do you know what would have been a better ending to that film? If, if the alien had got onto that craft. And then, of course, I watched it years later. And I thought, oh, it did. So, so the, even the truncated version that you got was nothing actually like the, the, the film that the, the creators had made. So that was the first one I remember. And the other one is, um, again, a horror film that sort of well known in the genre, but I don't know if either of you heard it, is Phantasm. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, I've heard of Phantasm. Heard of it, never seen it. Well, basically, there's a scene in it which is, I mean, it's totally horrific. It's set like, well, it's set in this sort of funeral home, for want of a better phrase. But, um, uh, the evil villain has these silver balls at his control and they fly around like the sort of drones, killer drones. Um, and and I mean, it's, it's not really a spoiler because there are images everywhere, but one of them basically embeds itself into um, yeah. uh, a priest's head and then drills into his head to, and the blood spurts out. And I remember literally turning green at that point. And um, my dad said, right, we're turning this off. Uh, and I was quite <laughs> relieved he did. So I think that was my very first experience of the horror genre. Well, how old were you? Uh, well, that I think came out in 1979. I mean, I was born in 68, so I don't. I did, it wasn't shown in 90. We didn't watch it. I don't think when I was 11, but I don't think I was much older than that. Um, how he chose that film to watch, I don't know. But um, it was probably me badgering him, saying, "Oh, it's a horror film. It's a horror film. Let's watch this." <laughs> because um, so the other memory that I've got. Um, it, again, it's quite vivid, and I, I, I wish that they would do this, but just times have changed. But back in the days when there was only a few TV channels, um, in the summer, when obviously the kids could stay up late, as I could, every Saturday night on BBC Two, there was a horror double bill. And it was always like the classic ones, like the, the Hammer ones, the Draculas and Frankensteins and, and Wolfman. Uh, and I 
we I took great pleasure. We would all sit down and watch these horror films, you know, because A it was after my bedtime. Uh, but B, they were they were completely fantastical stories. You know, it wasn't really anything to, to frighten me like Phantasm because I think we I think Ian was saying about you know the blood and the gore. There there's we, there are films that go sort of way too much into that, but yeah. you can't really be frightened by you know a six foot tall vampire with pointy teeth because that doesn't really exist, or you know Frankenstein stomping around in his boots because they don't really exist. So. I think that's why we watched that, and like I say, that's where my my love of horror films kicked in. And say, if I if I if I go home now and, and like I'll, I'll turn the TV on, I don't really watch TV. I'll I'll instantly go to the movie channel, uh, and I'll instantly go to the horror film channel to see if there's anything I watch. So that's where my love of horror films as as a whole started. Mm. It's something that we've encountered a bit. That is, I think it's. Certainly when I look on social media, on Instagram or, or Twitter, with the film community, I think like with the horror genre, if you like it, you don't like it a little bit, you like it a lot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That that it is a thing that or people say, oh, horror, you know, love horror. Da, da, da. Whereas, and it's not, say even, and when you were talking about 11 or 12, Badger and your dad to watch it, I think there was something about that age that I remember that it was, it was one of them things that everyone was like, oh, have you watched this latest horror? It was For me, it was Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. And I watched them because I, I wanted to be in the conversation at school. But I, I just didn't I just didn't enjoy them. I mean, I wasn't scared by them. And people were like, I was so scared. And I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't like, oh, wow, this is great. But some of them that I do like, so it's not that I'm snobbish or anything about it. It's just at the times when I've watched... Um, I haven't really enjoyed it, but the classics, you say Frankenstein and Dracula and stuff like that, I like. Um, but I think there's a, it needs to be clarified for me now about what horror is as well. So when you talk like, I always see things like Get Out, I really enjoyed Get Out, and I've seen mm -hmm. that defined as a horror film now. If that's a horror film, then I liked it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I don't like the things that come up in my mind when people say a horror film Um but yeah, so a quiet place was also described as horror, horror slash thriller. Now I don't know if it is. It seems a bit sci-fi to no, me. It's a, but... I'd say it's a it's a ten sci-fi. Yeah. So. So yeah. So I mean, it's one of them things that it's say uh, I'm not against it. It's just one of them things that I like. But I did notice that it is quite. If you like horror, you really like horror. Yeah, a lot. A lot of my friends actually pull me up about my attitude to horror because I love them, but I do have a love-hate relationship with them. Mm. But the reason I have a love-hate relationship is because I'm always picking faults or or things that literally, in my eyes, don't make sense. For instance, a quiet place. You know, everybody raves about it, and you know, I watched it, and all the way, all the way, literally through the film, I'm thinking, why would you have a baby? <laughs> you know, why, why would you do that? You know, you, you literally got to live in a world of silence. Do you not know how much noise kids make? <laughs> so that is playing in the back of my head. I'm watching it and I'm, I'm, I'm being taken out of the story all the way along thinking, but why are you having a baby? I don't think they're bound to. Well, because, I mean, the second film starts like 436 days in, in the future and the baby is there. So yeah. you, you're working back... It's it's over a year since it happened that the first film is set, yeah. and that's what that's where I'm going. Well, that's over a year, you know, nine months normally for a baby. So, what were you doing? Could you not find anything else to do? Were you like when you're trying to, you know, stay alive? <laughs> so, um, these, these things happen. <laughs> I said yes. I mean, that could be it. I mean, uh, the other one that I mean, a very recent uh, thing. I went and watched The Unholy. I think. I can't remember if one of you seen that one. The uh, no, no, one of our guests talked about Matt, it. Uh, Matt, right. No, Simon. Matt. Matt. Was Simon. it Matt? It was one of them. It was one of them. Matt or Sam? Yeah. And um, it's basically this story of you know this girl who, who allegedly gets a visitation by the Virgin Mary, and then obviously it, it, it goes a bit pear shaped. But again, um, she sees this vision um, by a tree, and the tree is is in this big open piece of land. It's pure white. So it sort of stands out. And, you know, the events that caused the tree to be what it is happened in 1845 or so. So not too long ago. And in a small area like that, you would think that people would know the story of what that tree is. You know, it's where they literally hung the witches and burnt them and stuff. And it's in this nice piece of real estate. 
And I'm, all I'm thinking is, why didn't you chop the tree down and build a house? Down? <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's, it's you know, I, I'm, I love the films, but half the time I'm just picking faults in them, which other people go, look, it's just a film. Honestly, just, you know, let it wash it. And I'm thinking, I can't. I would have chopped that tree down 70 years ago. That's half yeah. the fun sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think there's an element of that to a lot of films, and I do that sometimes. It, but if there's too many of them things that it's ridiculous and it's lost me, a lot of things I can just get over because I'm just like, that wouldn't happen. But it is that suspension just of disbelief thing, isn't it? You can suspend yeah. it for some stuff, but yes. they can only push you so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that, but I won't give you that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, John, so just moving on. Um, so when you said you remember going to the cinema and people throwing popcorn and scrambling around the fault, what, what, can, can you remember a film that you watched at the cinema or the earliest memory of a film you watched at the cinema that really impacted you? You thought, wow, this is amazing. So a lot no. of people have been on it. It's been Disney or The Goonies or Ghostbusters. What about you? I, I get the well, sense it's not going to be a Disney one for you. Well, to be honest, um, I'm, I'm going to be totally honest. I can't remember. I cannot. I, I've been racking my brains trying to think. Where I, okay, so if I was born in 68, did I start going in 78, 79? Um, what films were out then? And I honestly couldn't I couldn't think of the first film. Uh, I mean, on, on a slightly different note, perhaps, I mean, why I know I've got the love of cinema is almost because of the, the recent events that have happened. Because uh, as Emma said in, in her chat last week um our local city world closed down along with all the other city worlds yeah but there was a period of time last year where they opened up for a very short period of time and you could go back again so but they didn't open our city world they opened a lot of other city worlds and other cinemas in the area but um our city world doesn't open so i went uh to the local showcase which is it's a completely different uh format of how they've um built their cinemas and uh, I went to watch the, the latest Wonder Woman release, which well, I'm not going to go into because that's just a laughable uh, excuse for film. And again, a bit one, I'm going to actually get onto you know, the film that started to hype. But anyway, so, um, so I got my ticket and um, I walked through the door and I went on an afternoon because I had a day off. Um, and to say that what what happened was when I was walking down the aisle, so one of these was just one little big long aisle with all these, you know, numbers off to the sides, and the hairs on the back of my neck literally stood up, thinking, "I, I have missed this so much." Mm -hmm. that going to the cinema experience to watch a film in a big dark room. I mean, the trailers now are saying, you know, that is one of the big appeals of cinema you watch it in a big room full of strangers but you're all having the same experience and honestly I was walking down that aisle and the hairs were still on my back of my neck and I went in and I watched the film and then you just well I'll watch a better one next time but yeah I mean that's how I you know the, the love of cinema for me I can't remember honestly I honestly can't remember the first film that I watched in the cinema but um that's how I know my love for cinema is real because of the effect of not going for so long and then going back, it, it, that had a profound effect on me. And, you know, it was um, quite, quite emotional, really. Brilliant. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Absolutely. Um, what film do you think deserves more credit than it gets? Um, maybe it's a film nobody else likes but you, or a film you just think has been tragically overlooked. Okay. Now, again, as I said, I've been thinking of a few films, but... Um, then yesterday it hit me because I was watching um, Crash and I suddenly remember the film and uh, it's Dora the Explorer. Have you seen Dora the Explorer? I kind I wanted to, but it was one of those ones where I'm like, I can't go to the cinema to see that. See, there you go. So this is the perfect example. <laughs> I haven't, but I've only heard good things. It's a, it, Seriously, it is so so this is what I suddenly thought this fits the criteria because as I say you two haven't watched it because you know you think that wouldn't be for me it is hilarious I mean it is literally laugh out loud funny uh, and the nods and winks to the TV series which I've only watched in passing my you know my boy is like nearly 10 now so you know again we watched it a few years ago but um uh, yeah it just came on so we decided to watch it as you know, a family uh, and it is one of those a bit like Zootopia, which again is another one of my Great favorite. Films. Oh yeah, I like Zootopia. Where, yeah. where I am laughing more than the kids because some of the jokes you can tell have been written with adults in mind. 
So yeah, when I was suddenly hit me last night when you said, but you know, a film that you love that doesn't get enough appreciation, Dora the Explorer it would be it, which you know, for a horror loving you know, man of over fifty, <laughs> seem, might seem quite. There's no strange, way I expected but, you to go at all. <laughs> no, but that's that's great. I love that. That that it's one of them things that I watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same with Luke. It's one of them ones that I just couldn't bring myself to go to the cinema and say, can I have one for Dora the Explorer, please? <laughs> I just thought people so, would be staring at me. <laughs> so, but um, I say I loved it. I mean, absolutely loved it. And I've watched that again multiple times. So I've just added that, that to my, my watch answer. list. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side of the coin, yeah, I'll put it on my letterbox to watch this as well. On the other side of the coin, what film do you just not understand the hype? It just got so much hype. Um, and you just don't get it. So, like, um, well, it doesn't matter. You, you've heard Luke's opinion with The Greatest Showman that it's just not, he hates it, and he doesn't get the hype. What about you? What film would fit in that category for you? Um, yeah, I mean, if we want, I don't know if we wanted to get onto the topic of The, of the Greatest Showman. It wasn't even that um, I, I'm not the biggest fan, you know, I'm not the world's biggest fan of The Greatest Showman. I have seen it. I went to the cinema to see it three times. I went to watch it once. Um, then I took the family. Um, because I said you've got to go again. It was one of those. It was almost like a sleeper film, wasn't it? It sort of crept on people, and then it, 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 yeah, it ran got and word ran and ran. Yeah. So then I went and saw it after without them um, again. So, but um, no, I mean the one that I again I was thinking about these. Uh, the literally the one I've written to the top of the list is is the Black Panther film um, because it was it was hyped up beyond belief, and I watched it and I thought it was all right, but. But nothing really grabbed me about it. I couldn't understand why um, it got such a good reaction. So that was the that was the top of uh, topic of my list. I wasn't going to go into the controversial opinion on that, but I won't go there. I'll just go for the hype film. Yeah, I know I say I love Marvel films, but that that was nowhere near the top of my list of, of, of great Marvel films at all. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think the statement that it made and the pioneering aspect of it was far more important than actually how good the film was the yeah. film for me yeah. so i am fully supportive of the point that it made um in the political landscape the breakthrough that it made into you know diversity and representation fully support that but as a film i just didn't like it and it's not because of those things it was uh, i did not like it i thought it was okay but the same with wonder woman I thought the no. first two thirds of Wonder Woman were excellent, and the last act mm. was atrocious. But it's one of them ones where I almost feel bad saying it because with Black Panther and with Wonder Woman to a degree, they're making bigger statements than the film itself. So I'm fully supportive of them. But yeah, I agree with you. I didn't get the hype around Black Panther, particularly the fact that it was Oscar nominated. It's when the fact that it's bringing representation that's not been there before, particularly in that yeah. way, overshadow all, it, the representation of it becomes bigger than the film almost mm. deserves. Yeah. Um, with, yeah. I mean, Black Panther was okay, but yeah, you're right. It's not. It's not in my top. In fact, I'm doing a rewatch of the Marvel films at the moment. Um, you know, although it's been paused the last few weeks, um, and some of them I'm really looking forward to. And that one, you know, I'll do it, but I'm not particularly. You know, it's. Yeah, I started it, it, it's, watching. It's got a weekend, a really weekend. Well, I mean, again, yeah. if you thinking about, it, I mean, Wonder Woman would be another one actually. And again, mm -hmm. you don't want to denigrate the message that it sells, but again, as a film, I thought the story was okay. I mean, it's, it was, I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy it. I did enjoy it, but um, you know, given the hype that it got, but perhaps mm -hmm. it was hyped for on a tangent to the actual film itself. And I say the second one, um, again, you, know, you can actually put that. Like I said before, we could almost put that in because hype for the second one was even. Higher, I thought, than the first one, mm. and then I watched it, and um, I mean, she doesn't even appear as Wonder Woman apart from like five minutes for the first forty-five minutes. Mm. Uh, you know, when they did that in the first Batman, the Nolan Batman film, that was fine because it sort of made sense. Mm. How you know you're literally starting the story arc, so it takes the time to get to where he becomes Batman. But in this, I was expecting a full-on, you know, explosion into the Wonder Woman universe. Uh, and a bit like um, you know why I don't like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is because they've got shortstop in there, who is one of the most annoying characters I've ever seen. And um, again, I, I do take these things quite literally because what annoyed me about the second Wonder Woman film was at the start where they have the race 
Mm-hmm. And um, she's leading the race by miles and miles. And then, you know, she gets a bit cocky and looks behind her, gets knocked off the tree. And um, it's a bit like why I've always hated the hare and the tortoise uh, fable. Because I'm just thinking, <laughs> why would you do that? Again, I'm just thinking, why would you do that? Just concentrate on what you're doing. You know, the hare and the tortoise is about, you know, always, you know, the, the tortoise always wins. I'm thinking, no, because I wouldn't be as stupid as the hare. No, I, I wouldn't fall asleep. I'd just get to the end and then fall asleep. And a bit like that, I just didn't, I didn't like the beginning. So it's just, and that sort of almost put me off when you've got such an annoying incident at the first, of course, she gets demoted. Sorry, there, there might probably be a story, but it's not really. Um, um, you know, she gets demoted and kicked out and just thinking, oh, why would you do that? Yeah. And the rest of the film makes absolutely no sense. It's just, <laughs> you well, watch I mean, it, I did laugh. Um, I laughed um, out loud. Yeah, I mean, there's people a, there's a fight like scene where, where they, not, they bump into a pillar. They bump into a stone pillar and smash through this pillar, and it hits the floor and bounces up. And I'm thinking that's a concrete pillar; it's not going to bounce anywhere. And I just <laughs> thought, who who is responsible for the for the direction and to put that in? Yeah, uh, it, it reminds me of the um, of the third Superman film more than anything. You know, the first one reminded me of the first Superman film, but it's just yeah, it's. It's the, the first one had a poor ending, but this one was just all the way through. It just it made no sense. No, dreadful. Not yeah, I'm going to rewatch. Well, rewatch. I haven't watched them all. I'm not. I'm going to watch all the Marvel films in. Is it chronological order? So, right. Yeah. So watch the order that the timeline that they're supposed to happen in. So I think I'll start with Captain America. I think is it first Avenger. See, I wouldn't do that. Um, and again, I know there are different trains of thought, but for me, um, it sort of spoils the message, as in uh, one of my favourite films in the whole series is Captain Marvel. Mm. Uh, I mean, I love Captain Marvel. Again, I've seen that at the cinema, you know, four or five times, and at home, again, you know, when, when I want something to sort of cheer me up, uh, which we'll get onto again a bit later on, um, I watch that. But there's a bit where Agent Coulson, and again, it's not a spoiler. He he dies in one of the earlier films, and then of course he he appears in this one um, as as his younger self. Mm-hmm. Now again, if you watch them in chronological order, you're not going to get that as Agent Coulson moment because mm-hmm. that's you're you're watching him grow old and then die at the end. Whereas the way they filmed them and showed them, you know, he dies, but then he he appears. So that's why I've never done them in the actual time uh, chronological. Mm-hmm. Order. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, it's the same with Star Wars. I've never. I, I try not to do them in the in the chronological order because it's a slog getting through those <laughs> those first three. And <laughs> um, but if you do them in the order release, you have three good ones, three not so good ones, and then well, mixed batch what on the end. But at least you've got hope. <laughs> what first three are you talking about? Episode I, one, episode, made episode two, and episode one, two, three. three yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. I must have had that thing that. Vanishes your memory of watching films. Men in Black, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. Anyway, so, so John, what would you say is your most controversial film opinion? I'm going to say this almost for 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 effect. Um, is that the Goonies is 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 not very good. I mean, it's it's all. And that's the end of this week's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I'm saying that is because um, I didn't even finish it. I honestly, I mean, I did watch it. Because uh, again, it was like built up over over these years, and you know, it was almost it became a, a little bit of a badge. Have you ever watched the Goonies? Nah, never. Watched. You've got to watch the Goonies. No, nah, I never watched it. I never will. And I was, you know, I will just to spoil all the people that I've said I'm never going to watch it. And then I watch it, and again, uh, you know, if, if I'm on my phone more than I'm watching the film, that's not good. And um, but the whole, I just find it completely boring, completely boring. So. That's actually my most controversial opinion that the Goonies. I would say I I would say it's anybody's most controversial opinion. (laughs) Wow. But although saying that, John, when did you watch it? Uh, I would say about six months ago. Yeah. So I do think I would concede that I think if you'd watched it on release or when you were young, you it would hold up better. Now, if I never watched it. Now, I could probably see how I would not, not, I wouldn't like it as much now, but because it was such an important part of my childhood that I was a Goonie, effectively, that it was representing, you know, children and an adventure and all that, that I bought into much more than a film. 
Mm-hmm. Do you okay. know what I mean? It was it meant so much more, and I loved it. Um, yeah, what... so I do think that that has an impact. That if you watch it as an adult only, then yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, when I was a kid, it was it felt like a film that was made just for me. You yeah. know, it was like everything I wanted a film to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, but looking at it, it, probably doesn't hold up. Yeah, from a fresh view and from now, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. To be honest. Yeah, I watched I think... it recently, and there was a warning because I watched it on Think Sky about saying some views expressed in this aren't representative of today or something. And it and there's a lot of that appearing now and loads of controversy on Twitter about it. But I think it's about, you know, the truffle shuffle and making, you know, fat shaming chunk, um, <laughs> which we can all relate to as part of being kids. That was it. But What's nowadays, funny is, but one. I remember last time I watched it going, gosh, chunk isn't as fat as some, um, <laughs> as I, am, I remember. <laughs> it's like kids have definitely got bigger. But yeah, so that is controversial, but I will concede. I mean, I'm outraged, but I will concede that <laughs> if you're watching it as, as you say, a 50-something-year-old man, having never watched it in the magic of a childhood, then yeah. Because I think there's a lot of films like that that if I hadn't watched them as a child and just watched them now, I'd be like, I don't like that. And some not some that would hold up really well. But some of them just brings back the memories of the times you used to watch it. And how you yeah. felt when you used to watch it, and yeah, yeah. And say for me, it's one of the first films I saw at the cinema, so it was for huge cinematic experiences. Say it was people my age when I was watching it doing things and going on this sense of adventure, hunting for pirate ships and treasure, all stuff I was interested in. When, at that the time. idea that there could be a hidden pirate ship underneath where you live, yeah, was just outstanding <laughs> to me. <laughs> you know, we lived yeah, right next you to could... uh, Castle Eden Dean at that point. And the idea that there could be something hidden in there just blew my mind. <laughs> and you could get all the money to save the family home. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, um, just in the, in the last bit of time before we finish, we, we weren't going to talk about iconic scenes, so we've named, n- named a lot of films there that do have iconic scenes. Luke came out with Raiders of the Lost Ark, that opening scene. Um, and there's some films that I guess would be iconic. And when we're, when we're thinking about this, some of the ones I could think of were um, probably Psycho. The shower scene in Psycho is cinematic, uh, iconic in the cinematic world. Um, Sound of Music, that opening scene where she's singing on the mountains, although Luke reckons he's never seen the Sound of Music. I might have um, seen scenes from it. I've never seen the whole film. Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, the I am... Your father scene, um, so um, yeah. So they were the ones that initially came to mind. Um, what about you guys? What comes to mind when you think of iconic film scenes? Shall I go? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Well, I mean, the, the question I was, or I was more leaning on about the music okay. um, kicking in, and again, that that you know that hair standing up on the back of the yeah, neck, yeah. and there are two. The um, I mean, well, three actually. One is the the one behind you is the Rocky. You know when he's yeah. when he does the training montage and that gonna fly now kicks in. Yeah. I mean, how anybody can watch that and not think I'm gonna strap my trainers on and I'm gonna yeah. go for a run yeah. in the next five minutes after every time. Finishes. You know, I mean, and, and I'm gonna learn to box and I'm gonna get fit because it has that effect on me. And it's like you say, I've watched that again how many times? But every time I watch that, or it, or to be honest, you could pick any of the Rocky training montages, couldn't you? you know, like you know, when he's fighting. <laughs> Ivan in the snow and he's doing those those uh, sit ups from his head touching the floor yeah. around back. But um, the other two that um, say sprang to mind were, but uh, I think possibly because uh, again I love the genre and I love the, the the actual music itself. But there's one in Thor Ragnarok where um, you know again it's not really much of a spoiler. There's the big fight scene going on in the bridge and Thor is being uh, beaten up by his sister and he's and he drifts off. And, and, and he sees his father and, and his father says well you Thor god of hammers uh, and then he comes back and then all of a sudden he realizes he's the god of thunder so he summons thunder you know kicks hella away and then he he joins the scene from the battle and then that scene where, where he literally flies down from <laughs> yeah. the, the top right of the screen and the Led Zeppelin immigrant song kicks in uh, I mean that is is for me 
are just a perfect piece of music and cinematography. And I say he's literally just flying. And then he obviously it, it kicks off. So that was the the first because I love Led Zeppelin as well. So you know that, and I think they did show they played it a bit earlier in the film. But when it kicks in again, that that I thought wow, you it's know. a good moment. Uh, and, the other, and the the other one is, is slightly it's a different is actually again going back to Captain Marvel because is if you take the sort of the way this game the story arc where um she's so sort of suppressed uh because of what she is and who she is almost like the being a woman mm -hmm. thing and obviously the soundtrack involves a lot of women uh artists but there's the bit where um there's a fight scene kicks in and uh she takes on like four protagonists the, the four people who are on the ship where she breaks out of her chains and then no doubts just a girl kicks in <laughs> and that, that has such an iconic a little riff at the start and as soon as that riff kicked in i mean uh, the grin on my face because i knew where they were gonna go with the with the, the music and uh, the plot and then of course she takes on these four uh evil villains while just being a girl and the, those two musics okay if, if they literally have that effect on me that you know mm -hmm. my, my mood changes those are my two not necessarily iconic scenes as as described by ian but where the music and, and the, the, the scene just absolutely synergize completely. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I think the one that immediately came to mind for me was um, Jurassic Park, where the first see that uh, huge dinosaur, the camera pans up and they have that moment. But then there's that moment where Sam Neill sort of sat, sat down on the grass and he looks up <laughs> and he sees the what's in front of him and the music, John Williams' the score just kicks in at that moment. And it's just that perfect moment of you've had the awe and then the music takes you emotionally with it. Wonderful, wonderful moment. Yeah. Um, and then any scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to think that there are, the training montage from Rocky is probably the one for me, particularly the first one with the scene on the poster behind me where he goes up the steps for the first Absolutely. time. It's become, it's become so iconic that, I think everybody goes to Philadelphia has to do that. And it's still on my bucket list to, to do it. Although I should have done it 20 years ago rather than now, the thought of running up on the stairs. Um, so I'll have to get fit. Um, but yeah, so if I listen to the music enough, I'll get fit enough to run up those stairs. Um, yeah, another one probably and is, is probably an iconic scene, probably one of the most famous scenes in cinema. And it's not so much about the music, although it's there is Saving Private Ryan the opening scene with that it's still it's still even now after so many watches it's just it's just brutal absolutely brutal horrific um and probably the scene most in any film that has brought home to me the horrors of war as young men it's it's not even the bit when they get onto the beach it's the bit before because you've read about in your history books what's going to happen what happens that you know that they're there and yeah, so that's one for me. It's just a gentle tones. But for music, it probably goes back to what we were talking about the other week. For me, one of the scenes is is E.T. Mm. Um, the, the score in that oh. is probably the main character. It's just yeah. phenomenal throughout. That bit right at the end, as we talked about, where there's about 10 minutes. No one says anything. The kids are on the bikes and everybody's oh, ri man, riding... Man. And it's just music, and it's just what a scene. Just yeah. as I say, the main character is the, is the score there. Yeah, so yeah, that's when I, I want to I want to get my um son to watch. I've not watched it together, but uh, you know, again, the main thing I remember that is being in floods of tears mm -hmm. himself uh, as an adult watching it when you know when he dies and they put the sheet on him. It's like no, and then of course I begin. <laughs> do I really want to put my son through that? But you know, a lot of the, a lot of films you know again have that story arc where as well then there's a horrible thing that happens but it all comes right in the end but that for me was, was just something I, I do remember absolutely finding completely horrific how dark that one went mm. so I've not yeah. watched that yet really. I think it's the last 15 minutes or so it's mainly just music because they're riding the bikes they're being chased and pursued and they're trying to get there in time and it's it's just the music and it's just the excitement it's just what a scene that is mm. so <laughs> That's very good. So if you're watching or listening and you have either some a scene that you particularly like in a film or particularly one where the music kicks in and you know what's going to happen and you kind of, I don't know, just brace yourself for, for what's about to come, then 
then let us know what that they are because we'll have missed loads, no doubt. Yeah, I'm sure we've missed. <laughs> we've missed. That's the thing. Every good film has probably got one <laughs> at those moments. Um, so I'm sure we've missed we've missed a lot. Um, and be sure as well, you know, get in touch with us on Twitter. Um, we're on Facebook now. You can get in touch with us on Facebook. You can write comments below on YouTube. And uh, we'd love to invite you on if you want to come and talk about films with us. But also hit subscribe so that you can get updates on when our next episode drops each week. Yeah, and I just want to thank John for being here with us today. It's been really good to just talk about films with you, being yeah. really fun um, and some great film recommendations there, some great insights. Um, I'm definitely going to go away and watch Dread again um, this week. Well, if nothing and else, you've right. recommended Dora the Explorer to me, yeah. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to dig into that one. <laughs> it will guarantee to cheer you up, honestly. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll be back again next week. See you then.